In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this great feast of Christmas to celebrate, mostly in our homes, this wonderful day when Christ's love has been made known to us. For the times that we have not always loved as Christ loves, for the times that we have forgotten to walk as his disciple, we take a moment and we lift up our hearts and our minds to him. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindications and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord a royal diadem held by your God. No no more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Sing. 
from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus the Gospel of the Lord. A few years ago, when I had first become a priest, some of the little kids had come in from our parish grade school to get a little tour of the church right before Christmas time and to practice for their pageant. The nativity scene had just been set up, and so I thought, well, I'll use it as a learning experience for these young ones. And so I brought them over to the nativity scene, and I started to point and ask who was which person in the particular scene that they were looking at. So, of course, right away, they were able to pick out our Blessed Mother. They were 
able to see the shepherds and point them out right away. They knew the three kings, even though they were kind of off to the side and not in the actual scene itself. I think they were most impressed with the sheep and the cows. But when I pointed to St. Joseph and I asked the little ones, who is this man? One of them said, another shepherd. One of them said, Mary's dad. And another one said, we don't know. St. Joseph, the quiet one, the hidden one, the one that we often forget about when we tell the Christmas story. And I love the fact that the gospel for this particular celebration of Christmas this year is really the story of St. Joseph's yes. We all know about Mary's yes. We all know about the courage that Mary had in order to say yes to be the mother of God. But a lot of times we forget about the yes that Joseph also had to make himself, the forgotten one. And yet Joseph was vitally important to the story of Christmas and the story that we tell about the Christ child, what he did and the importance of the Holy Family in our church, in our world, and in our lives. The beauty of this particular gospel story is really this, that Joseph, in the beginning, really truly thought perhaps that God didn't need him. And so he was willing to step aside to divorce Mary quietly, not because he was angry or upset, but simply because he thought that God and Mary had it figured all out and he was no longer needed. And yet, beautifully, as God always does to hearts that are open, God spoke to Joseph and said to Joseph, I need you. I need you to help raise my son. I need you to help protect Our Lady. I need you to be a father to Jesus. And Joseph, in courage and in bravery and in prayer, said yes. A yes, not knowing what the future would hold. And I think in these days, and I think after this year that we have all experienced together, I think Joseph's yes is really quite a model for us and and quite an example for us as we move forward as a family of faith, as a nation, and into 2021. Like Joseph, we need to be the men and women and young people who are courageous enough to say yes, to walk into the unknown, not knowing necessarily what will happen, but knowing always that God never abandons us. That's the beauty of Joseph. He didn't know everything, but he certainly knew that God wouldn't leave him. And so he trusted and took another step into the darkness. Joseph gives us all that courage, like him, to say yes to God's will to step into the darkness of the unknown. The second thing about Joseph that I think is important for us, again, as we are in these times, is that Joseph was a quiet man of prayer. He never ever made the Jesus story really about himself. Everything that he did was to make sure that Jesus was known to others, that Jesus was protected, that his wife and his son always had a safe place Joseph put his heart and his life on the line for his family. And I think that's a beautiful message for us, a message that many of us learned this past year, that we have to look out for one another. Joseph made sure that others came first. And I think that too is the Christmas message, to put others first, again to know that we can only do that if we become people of prayer people of humble listening, and people of courage. And I think that's the final part of Joseph's life that I admire, and I'm so glad is really part of the Christmas story today. It took courage for Joseph to do all that he did and truly make sure that he constantly was in tune with God. That's the goal, and that's the message. And so I think I challenge all of us as we end this year, as we move into 2021, that we become people of courage, that we're not afraid to look out for one another, that we're not afraid to make sure that we lead others to Jesus through Mary.
because that's what Joseph did every day of his journey. And notice he never said a word, at least recorded in scripture. I'll end with this final story and it's a beautiful story. It's a legend. We told this story more often than we do now. But the story is this. When Mary went to the temple at a young age to be dedicated to God, at some point, the temple priest knew that she had to become betrothed. So the story goes that the temple priest called all the available men to the temple in order to pick a future spouse for Our Lady. And as those men came, they placed on the altar of the temple, their walking sticks, their shepherd staffs, whatever they had to carry as they made their way through life. Joseph, like all the other men of his time, would have carried some type of walking stick or staff. And as he laid his staff on the altar, his staff bloomed lilies, lilies of purity, lilies of hope, lilies of resurrection. And the temple priest knew in that moment that the righteous man that God wanted to take care of the Holy Family was Joseph. And so this became a sign of Joseph's call to be a man of hope, to be a man of protection, and to be a man who takes care of his family. And so maybe let's make that our goal for Christmas and for the new year, that just like Joseph, we become those people that look out for each other, that continue to look for God by the way we pray, by the way we serve, and that ultimately we know that God will always come to us in love, helping us through the darkness of the unknown, because that's who God is, and that's the Christmas message. So on behalf of all of us at St. Anne's, Father Mink, myself, our staff, we wish you and your families a very blessed Christmas season and a happy, healthy, and holy 2021. May St. Joseph be our guide in the year ahead. Together now, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made, For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This day, we celebrate God's great love for us. And in gratitude now, we bring him these prayers for ourselves, for our church, and for the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for bishops, priests, religious, and all who work in and for the church, may the Lord continue to bless them in their ministry of heralding the birth of Christ, the Son of God. We pray to the Lord. For all who hold political power, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them use their position for the sake of the common good. We pray to the Lord. For migrant families who travel in search of a home, may they, through the mercy of God, find welcome, support, and help to start a new and holy life. We pray to the Lord. For all who share in this worship, of this Christmas season. May the Christ child bring great light into any darkness of our lives. We pray to the Lord. 
for all who have died. May our gracious God welcome them into the eternal home to praise him forever. We pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions that you hold in your hearts for this mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you showed your love for us by sending your Son. We trust that in that love, you will help us and guide us. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you. Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim Thank you. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing again, just one final time on behalf of all of us here at St. Anne's, for all of you at home who are worshiping this day, we do wish you and your families a very blessed Christmas season and all the best happiness, holiness, and good health in 2021. I do want to take just a moment to thank Patrick O'Connor for lecturing today and also to Chris Eckridge for playing and singing for us. As always, even though we may not physically be together, we are united in Eucharist and together as family of St. Anne's. So know that you are in our hearts and we look forward to the day that we can all be back together in church celebrating the love of God incarnate, which is really the Christmas mystery right here for us. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Speak of God.